That's a school of Spanish or spotties coming through under the boat now. I'm just going to drop a jig down and see if I can hook one of these guys up. Just hooked up on the jig. Good spanner, I reckon. Come on. It's live out the way. Oh, you hit it hard. <laughs> and you hit it near the top. Definitely a good fish. Got some lines to get around and navigate here. Oh, he's dropped it. No. No. A really good fish. Why did he drop it? Ah, man, unreal. Just didn't hook up properly. That was a really good hit. Solid strike. Hooked one on the jig. Not a big fish. Probably a schoolie. Just saw him come through the sounder up high. Thought I'd throw the jig out. Had a wine, and this guy was pretty close to the boat. Don't go under the boat, please. Come on. Spotty or a schoolie? Spotty. That's good, we'll keep this guy. Always a good fish this time of year. Not a big guy, but still not a bad fish. There we go. Nice uh, spotty on the jig. <sighs> yep. Yes, that's a good fish. Come on. He dropped it again. Yes, oh, yeah. And again. What the hell is going on? Oh, that's a better one. Come on. Yes. Could be a spanner. Right, let's keep this guy on the line this time. He's pulling some string. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Good fish. <laughs> There's a few fish constantly coming through the sounder then, so it's just a matter of throwing the jig out again and again. That was a school then. There was a couple that missed it. And then this guy just jumped all over it. Unusual that they're not taking the floaters and the livey out the back. At the moment, they want something fast and shiny. Constant mood changes on these fish. Let's see if we've got a spano or a spotty. He's got a fair bit more energy in him to go yet, I reckon. He's gonna go for another run in a sec. Guy's got a bit of weight for him. Okay, I'm gonna get this down rig out of the way. Put him on the seat for now. Bit of room to fight. We don't want you down there. We're on this side of the boat. Come on. Come on. Oh, that other line's sinking now as well. This could get interesting. I want to get this guy boat side. Come on, he's right under the boat, which is not a good position to be in. Come on, go down deeper, mate. Down deeper, that's it. Got him central. He's between the electric and the main prop, so... I should be all right as long as he swims out. Here he comes. Yeah, we're good now. Get some line on him. There's a good fish. All right, we want to get this other line in now, otherwise we're in trouble. I've got a floating pilchard, which is right in the way here. We 
got him pretty clear. Come on. He wants to swim to that other side, eh? I want to keep him over here. It's got to be a Spanish, this one, for sure. Oh, you want to be a pain in the ass, don't you? Everything's on this side of the boat, the gaff, the cameras, <laughs> the joys of filming by yourself when you don't have a decky. All of a sudden now, I've got to change position of everything. <sighs> Here's a good fish, this one. Come on, Mr. Spano. Come down the back here. There he is, I can see him now. Oh, he's gonna go around that motor. <sighs> They love making life difficult sometimes. Man, he's a fair chunk of a fish. There he comes, he's coming up now. Oh yeah, he's a good fish. Oh, he's getting him out of the sun, we'll let to see him a bit. He's hooked in the side too. So I wanna get this guy in pretty quick. Could drag him back, he could throw that hook real easily. Lucky hookup for me, an unlucky lucky hookup for him. Come on, mate. Yes. Oh my God, he's just hooked in the side of the fin. That has got to be one of the luckiest hookups I've ever had in the Spanish. Real lucky side fin hookup. <laughs> well, doesn't matter how you get him in the boat, as long as you get him in the boat. Yes. <laughs> uh. oh, I just took one in the bottom. Oh, what is he? It's pretty small. Must be a school there, I reckon. Get him up fast. Get him released. It's a good bite happening at the moment. Constant hookups. Little guy who just got eaten in half. Wow. I reckon a mackerel ate that and not a shark. Look at that. <sighs> okay, so with this guy, we want to hook him with the treble inside the mouth. Come on, mate, open your mouth up. That's it. Up through the head. Make sure it goes all the way through so it doesn't come undone. We'll come out and then we want to pin this back hook behind the dorsal like that and then this guy should swim downwards now fling him about 15 20 meters out the back a little bit of line medium drag and in the rod holder and that should get a fish these guys are constantly changing their mood Jigs, salivies. Haven't hit a floater today, which is unusual. There's one. Oh, I'll chuck him. They're down deep at the moment. Even though I'm marking them in the midwater, I'm hooking them down in 25 meters. Oh, they're out of salivy. That's a good fish. Let's get this guy out of the way. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Lines are cleared. Yes. Doesn't take long when you got a live bait hanging out the back there. <laughs> the old Spanos can't resist it. That's a bit of fun. For a Tuesday morning, the versatility of being on spot lock and switching between liveys, jigs, floaters is definitely the way to catch fish. You're catering for all their moods and just a matter of time before they just get tempted by one of them. I've been bitten off twice, which means they were taking them just above the wire 
and I don't like to have too much wire on because it can deter the bite this will be a solid spano of course he wants to go under the boat and around the other side which is exactly where I don't want him to go let's see if he plays the game he's a big guy come on I may have to follow him in a minute Keep me away from that electric motor. He's going down deep. Well, he's going to play the game. Rod tip low. He's swimming around the back of the boat, which is not ideal. I may have to follow this guy. Otherwise, he's going to get caught in the prop. on this side of the boat now he seems pretty well hooked but it's a big fish really good fish you usually expect a good fish to take a livey out the back don't usually catch small ones oh yeah come on boy yeah, he is solid really using my sounder in this situation I can see the fish coming through at different depths and so then I know exactly where to get my livey to or my jig or my floater and at the moment they're pretty much spread throughout the water column from five meters to 20 so i can pretty much just put a bait out and it will eventually get down into the zone where these fish are hanging and he's going to go around the other side i want to keep him over here now that i've got the cameras here and the gaff is on the other side of course come on oh he's got some weight i'm glad he took the heavier heavier gear Okay, it's coming up higher. There he is, I can see some silver. Bit of bling on the surface. Means he's worn out. Okay, now he's at the depth where he can wrap me around this motor if I'm not careful. Swing him around. Steer his head, come on. Oh yeah, he's a chunky fish chunk of a fish perfect hook up for a livey oh where's that gaff oh that is a chunk of a fish absolute ripper <laughs> that is a beauty that's a good 12 kilo spano for sure let's get this guy out so we can get a look i want to spin him around so you can see where he's hooked there we go you can see there, really well hooked with both hooks, treble in the mouth, the 5 in the back, and a great hook up, awesome Spanish. That's a great result for my live bait out the back. And these guys are pretty chunky today. They've been feeding a lot of bait up and down the coast. And this guy's about to freak out, so I'm going to get him in the tub. Once again, you can see fish coming through from 10 to 20 meters through the sounder. And I'm throwing a jig out and got a livey out the back as well. Oh yeah, straight on, come on. Oh, it's a good fish too. Come on. Is that a spano? Maybe it's a reefy. Weird bite. Let's see. It hasn't run yet. Could be a reefy off the bottom. No, what the hell is it? Oh, it's a small spotty. Oh, now he wants to run. And there's all sorts coming through at the moment. Oh, there he goes. Took a while to wake up. The difference between these guys and a Spanish is quite considerable. Need to get a gaff in him pretty quick, otherwise he's going to go wild. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Come on. It's a bit harder to hook the old 
spotties. They like to flip around because they're a bit lighter. They come off a bit easier. Nice hook up there with the jig. Get this guy somehow out of the way. He's a bit tangled up at the moment, so this could be fun. Oh, yep, that was easy. How lucky. Okay. Now, this technique doesn't get any simpler. The floating pilchard. No weight. I took the weight off just to make a better presentation. I line up those hooks. I'm using 10-0 LCAT gangs. And as you can see, putting the hooks just up near where the two, where the grey line is on the fish, making sure that they come across nice and straight. Like that. And there we have it. And all we do is literally just cast that out about 15 meters and it will sink slowly into the depth where I'm seeing those fish on the sounder. Yes. There it goes. The float has gone off. I had a tiny ball sinker on that floater and I took it off and that was the difference. It wasn't getting hit before. It's amazing the tiniest things that you change that bring on the bite. And that was the difference. One tiny ball sinker. Listen to that guy go. That's a good fish. <sighs> wow, such a subtle difference. <laughs> and did he run? <laughs> he hit that hard. <sighs> oh, has to be another good spano. Getting a good run at the moment. Limeys, jigs, floaters. It's great when everything works. And he ran hard, but he's kind of given up pretty easily. I've got him right here at the boat. Oh, yep, he's not a. Oh, he's a spotty. He's a big spotty. Nice one. Really nice size spotty, this one. Oh, yeah. Chunky fish. Let's see if we can play on this guy. That's a bit easier. There we go. Nice spotty floating pilchard. That's a classic hook out, that one. Straight. If we can get a shot at it, straight in the corner of the mouth with those gangs. And you can't miss. Taking the sinker off made all the difference then. Just made it more subtle and um, much more attractive to these guys when it's as basic as possible. Oh, that's a big hook up. <laughs> oh, yes. Whoa. Solid hookup on the floater then. Oh, that's a big fish. And he's under the boat. It's not going to be easy to stop. Oh, I have a tough angle here. Oh. <laughs> he just took that like a rocket. Wow. That was a strike. <laughs> Out of nowhere, the floater's just gone off in a big way. <sighs> this is going to be a nice Spanish floor, sure. <laughs> Just had that half an hour of nothing going on there. I think my mate Nigel's just hooked up behind me here as well on the downrigger. So they've obviously just switched on. Oh, that was a cracker bite. Bit of patience there. Just had to stop, get my breath, right on the tide turn. And now we can see a bunch of fish coming through the sounder. And that is the school that I've just plucked one out of. Hopefully you can see that. Blistering first run. And this guy has just worn himself out in about 15 seconds. Oh, he wants to be a pain. He's gone down deep now. He's a really good fish, this one. Oh, 
got some serious weight to him. <sighs> Big guy. This is going to be one of those good 15 kilo ones, I reckon. <sighs> oh, this is a chunky fish, this one. I gotta get the downrigger out of the way. <sighs> What an awesome morning. A lot of hookups, a lot of quality fish. Haven't caught anything off the bottom. I haven't even bothered fishing the bottom, to be honest. It's just been all about the top water today and the mid water. It's just like someone just, someone just hit the switch then and on they came. I got a hookup. Nigel Webster behind me's got a hookup. He's been downrigging, which is what I was doing in the last video. This time I'm using all the techniques from my advanced macro techniques film. I'm using the liveys, the floaters, and the jigs. It's that perfect time of year when these techniques come into their, oh, he's just snipped me. Wow, that was a big fish. I just saw him then and he just turned his head and bit me off. Oh, that was a cracker of a fish. I had him so close then. Oh, that's the fine line between Using wire and not using wire, you just don't get the hookups. I mean, you don't get the hits if you're using the wire, but sometimes it's just too deep in their mouth and he's just turned then and it's probably gone across the mouth and just not quite been enough hook and his teeth have got into it and he's had a, a clean bite through. Well, that's a shame, really good fish. But let's go again, there's definitely a bite happening. Well, that was a big fish to lose just then on the floating pilchard, but I'll just take a moment to pause and kind of show you how simple my setup is. It is really simple. I've got basically one rod in each corner. And the rod on the far side there is a livey, which is fluttering around at the back, which I've cast out the side, and he's swimming down. And this corner, the floating pilchard on a set of gangs. And I've also got my jig rig here ready to go, just in case I see a big score come through the sounder. Now, I don't like to put any more lines than that out, because if I do hook a fish, it means I have to clear a lot of lines and I prefer to have a fairly clear boat when I hook up. So there's less chance of me losing that fish whilst I'm clearing rods and, you know, stuffing around with things that are in my way. So really simple setup, one in each corner. At the moment, there's not much current. So the bait, the live bait and the floating pillar are getting down into the, into the zone. Uh, where the fish are, which are around 15, 20 metres consistently at the moment. So I've got a really good chance of getting a hook up um, with that simple setup. Okay, let's get another bait out. Where's a big one? There's a big one. We want that one there. Okay, same thing again. That worked perfectly. We want to hook the treble through his nose. Get it all the way through so that it's nice and tight. Hook at the dorsal fin. Okay, because so we want them to swim downwards and then get him out 15 meters, pull a bit of line out in the rod holder. Oh, yep. Oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> that was a wicked hookup. <laughs> come on. Oh, he's bit me off on that. Yes. <laughs> oh, what a surface strike. <laughs> oh, I could just see him on the top there. Line came peeling off the bay alarm. Less than two minutes. It's got to be a spotty, it's moving pretty fast. <laughs> what an awesome take. <laughs> oh, it's exciting when it's like that. <laughs> Fantastic fishing. <sighs> what have we got here? Mate, he took a big bait. It was a big slimy, I've only got one of them. He's come up quick, I think it's a good spotty, eh? Yeah, it's a big spotty. Not ready yet. Ah, he just bit me off. Ah, well, 
you get that. Well, fun morning session there. Heaps of bites, few different species, uh, and catching fish on a few different techniques is always fun. Uh, the jigs, the floaters, and the live baits work today. Now, you can see all these techniques in my advanced mackerel techniques film for 11 bucks. You can buy it from www.soloangler.com. Um, every bit helps towards putting fuel in the boat to come out and make these films. I appreciate your support. And uh, if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button uh, so I can come out and make more of these films. Uh, awesome morning, great conditions. I'm going to be able to fly home now, probably 30 knots, uh, and clean some fish and have some fish tacos for lunch and for dinner tonight. So I'll see you next time I'm on the water.